Okay, so we're going to run through some screenshot stuff. Um, start out by saying that I'm not an expert, and there's tons of people who are way better at this stuff than I am. And this is just the way that I do it. I'm sure there are lots of ways to do it. But I wanted to give you a little look at what I go, what steps I go through to take some screenshots. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my um, graphics screen. I'm not going to stay long on this. I'm definitely not going through all of the settings. If you want to look at my settings and compare them to yours, you can um, you can do that later. So there's the graphics settings that I have. And then uh, probably more importantly are the replay settings. So you don't have to have your uh, replay settings the same as your graphic settings um, so because you're not worried about frame rate for screenshots so basically everything's just cranked up uh, a couple things to note here is that I've got all of these special effects cranked up um, you know on motion blur and sharpening and distortion he hey so I have all the stuff cranked for the screenshot so if you want to look at that later you can okay so um, first thing we're going to do is just jump into, I've got a Kansas replay here. This is typically what I would do is fire up the replay, move over to uh, the race session, and just fire up the first lap here. So I'm um, letting the cars load in here. Um, first thing I wanted to mention is that obviously you're using your control <clears throat> F12 to bring up your camera edit and so I use that um, to set up your shots so what's next okay well um, I'm not really sure whether to go through the whole process of how I capture screenshots for a race probably not that important to anybody who wants to watch this later but um, really what I'm looking for is just in this case I'm gonna look for a some a shot an action shot of something of interest so I'm just gonna let uh, I'm gonna go over to the uh, far chase here, and I'm just going to go see if I can turn down that desktop audio a little bit. That's really loud. Okay, so I was just using the control numpad three to um, advance to the next accident in a replay. That's control num three, takes me to the accident. So you can see here that uh, a couple of cars got together. So we're just gonna back this up a little bit. See, what I'll do is I'll pop back to a different driver further behind. And I'll just take a look and see what happens here. It looks like the 99. Uh, there's a three-car incident here, and the rest of these guys get through, and it's really just, it's really this these two cars, I think, that are going to have the problem. I'm just going to go back a little further in the field and see if anything else happens. You see these guys just go off track. So it doesn't look like there's going to be much else involved here. So we'll go back up and take a look at what these guys get into here. So I'm just flipping around some different camera angles here, looking to see what happens. Like, looks like uh, the 99 turns into or hits Barkley and finish gets collected. So really here, I'm just trying to figure out like what actually happens. And what I'm trying to do is to figure out a spot um, in this where it represents sort of what happened in a single screenshot so um so that if anybody like the 97 or the 7 um or the 99 car like if they saw the screenshot they'd be like oh they'd be like oh yeah i remember that incident so that's sort of like the first thing i'll try to do i think that um one of the mistakes that a lot of people make when they're 
taking screenshots is like they'll just go to like tv one or something and um be like oh i can see both cars and remember when this happened and they take a screenshot and it's like well um while that may be a recording of, of the actual incident like it doesn't really give you much to grab onto from a visual standpoint so it's just sort of like oh a big empty track with a couple of cars on it doesn't really do much for anybody so i'm trying to you know sort of have some part of the incident that is um you know graphically pleasing and interesting and sort of captures what happened so in this case as we let this play you can see there's like some suspension travel going on there there's some nice smoke coming from the sevens he spins and then as he comes here you can see he gets into the wall so you can see here like there's some nice spark effects he loses his front end um it might be difficult because these two cars are far, so far apart to necessarily uh hey i just saw somebody jump into chat hey dustin um to get both of these guys in the same shot but you can see he spins around so there might be an opportunity there so one of the things you have to know is that if you back it up a little bit and then then i play this again you see you got some nice sparks there but it doesn't always happen in iRacing sometimes if you back it up and play it over and over again the those effects don't happen so you sometimes you have to like back it back it way up before like back it up by 30 seconds and then replay it and that's the way to bring those sprites back for the those visual effects so i'm going to go ahead and see if i can get something here so like that's not too bad because you can see the car up in the air suspension wise whatever it's still up in the air and now i've got the 17 coming in or the, yeah is it 17 whatever number this is i don't know what number that is i can't tell it's too blurry oh there it is 97 97 so that's a pretty good shot there i'm going to see if i can get something with that so what i'll do <clears throat> is i'll go and grab the um, uh, the pit road camera now one thing i want to point out to you guys is that um by default there's a track cam pack for every race or for every every track in iRacing and these are the typical like you see these cameras all the time for every track and they're not, they're not the same for every track like tv one two and three are different setups uh if it's a mile and a half or if it's a short track or whatever whatever but a lot of these other uh, cameras are the same all the time so um you can actually uh, um, download and store in your cameras packages different track packs for you can see I've got a couple here for this particular one um, but I'll just use the default one for now and I'll, and I'll show you a little trick um, later down the road about how to make this all better okay so we're gonna flip over this is this is the point I want to get this is a good shot of two cars ones being wrecked whatever so I'm gonna flip over to the pit lane and you can see like this pit lane thing doesn't look good at all it's not anywhere where we want to be so the next thing i want to point out is that i am using a gamepad i have a gamepad connected uh it's like a wired xbox ripoff whatever pc clone thing but you don't need to have that in order to get the shots that you want you can actually use the offset orient xyz's all these coordinates and you can actually use these to move around the track and find find the wreck and you everything you're about to see me do you can actually do with these up here the only thing that the trackpad does for you or the, the controller does for you is that it makes the whole process faster because you could just use your thumbsticks and bam you're away away you go so we're going to go to see if we can find this accident. It's over here somewhere. I have that key acceleration option checked so that um, if you hold it down a long time, it like travels really fast. So it's helpful. Okay, so you um, can see here that um, this, this seven car has got some nice damage in the front. It's 
and he's up in the air and so there's some nice smoke happening so what I'm gonna to try to do now is I'm gonna to try to frame this shot so that you can see both vehicles you can see the damage and you can see the um, the suspension up in the air so I'm just sort of looking around I'm, I'm not using anything but just XYZ's here to, to move around until I find something about the shot that that I like so typically I like to be fairly close to the subject and I don't want to be like I'm trying not to set up a shot where everything's empty so it's nice to have like some cars in the background like that's kind of cool where where we could potentially get some cars in the background so I'm just gonna move the camera over here see I can see the front end damage and then if I move um, down a little bit uh, you can s maybe get a if there's some sparks coming into play you can see now I'm actually inside the wall that's could be problematic but maybe not so let's see how we're doing here so I'm just really looking for something that floats my boat as far as just looking for a cool angle like I kind of like that angle but I can't see the other car which is kind of crappy yeah so one of the one of the th first things we're going to talk about is your um, FOV so there's a slider there called static FOV that you can move um, and basically it's it's well it's a field of view obviously um, so I use this a lot because I tend to like I mentioned before I think a lot of screenshots end up being like this all this empty space and you really can't get a sense of um, what's you know like there's there's nothing to um, make the eye pop about the screenshot because it's just like a couple of cars in a big giant empty gray space so I use the static FOV a lot um, it, the, the more that you um, decrease the, the FOV the more um, dramatic or drastic your changes to your XY's are XYZ's coordinates so like the more you're you increase that then you're getting less movement so but that's just fine-tuning stuff so anyway I'm not really finding like a cool the coolest shot about this so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this over and get a nice ground shot of these two cars oh hey look at that I lost my eye racing screen uh, I'm just gonna get a shot of these two cars and now we're gonna move on to like some of the other stuff that we do so I'm just going to hit the space bar to remove my UI for a second. And I'm going to try to frame this shot a little better. So like I don't care about what's going on way over here on the left. I'd like to have a couple cars in the shot. Um, I'd like to feature Vinish's front end. So I'm just sort of using my FOV slider and my angle here just to sort of set up a shot that might be... Like I'm like, oh, does it look better when it's low? Oh, look, you can see that AJ's car's up in the air. So, like, that's that's kind of cool to see. How low can I go? If I go down here, you know, like, that's a pretty dramatic-looking shot. You've got a little bit of um, sparkle there, a little bit of those. So, like, that's starting to look pretty cool. And then I can actually see some cars in the background, too. Now, things start getting a little bit weird the close, like, when you get really close up on stuff it starts to look a little bit weird but I'm just gonna go with something like this I can see a couple a few cars in the background I can see AJ up in the air so I think this is gonna be a good spot for a shot so I'm gonna bring back my UI and I move on to a couple of other things here so next thing I'm gonna talk about is this um, aperture so um, I'm not a photography expert and so I'm going to explain this the best way that I can understand um, lowering the aperture um, reduces the depth at which you can focus on things so for example if I have my f-stop at 32 um, and I do a manual focus on this you can see that 
pretty much the entire way of this slider, this manual focusing, I, everything is in focus all the time. If I take that down to f-stop 1 and I do the exact same thing, you can see how dramatically out of focus things can get and how much of a smaller um, zone of the focus focal length can you grab an in focus item so this is really important for setting up um, like key like if you're trying to focus on something in a screenshot like not you don't want everything to be having the same emphasis right you want something in the screenshot to be the thing that the viewer eye looks at and just sort of like the rest of the stuff is is background so in this case um, I definitely want the 97 um, and the 7 to be you know in the shot so I'm gonna go ahead and move my manual focus until the 97 is in focus there but you can see that AJ isn't I'm sorry the yeah AJ's car isn't so I'm just going to go ahead and increase this I'm gonna just take a shot at 2.8 and I'm going to do another manual focus and now I'm going to make sure that the okay so you can see that here now that this this car the green car is in focus and the 97 is more or less in focus it's pretty close then the reason that I want to find that um, like I'll even give up a little bit of focus on the 97 or this age or AJ's car on the front here I'll even give up a tiny bit of focus clarity if it means that in the background things are kind of blurred out so that it's not the focus like you can see here that the smoke in the background that 13 car um, even to some degree the clouds and the green um, uh, infield is is kind of uh, blurred out a little bit so you, you can really sort of get into focus these two cars that are here so that's something you're going to see me do a couple of different times when I um, when I go through some different screenshots so we're going to go with this screenshot the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this exposure slider. So first of all, I'll tell you at nighttime, um, anytime it's night in iRacing, the exposure slider does nothing, doesn't do anything. So it's only good for day, day shots. But um, what you can do is basically just manually eyeball this. Um, I find that almost everything I do in iRacing, um, I'm, oh, I'm on a shake one, uh, would be um, increasing increasing the exposure and you can see like okay i'm blowing out the sky and the clouds or whatever but it sometimes sets up a really nice effect it, you know like it looks like it's hot as an example the heat it, you know on the track and you're getting a lot of radiant or ambient light so i i typically will increase the the exposure um from default on on all like there there was the default and then look what happens when you bring that up a little bit it really makes things pop um, sometimes it'll like blow out stuff like you don't want to lose the uh, completely all the shadows and texturing in a car paint um, by doing that so you have to sort of play it by ear but the other thing is that you know JPEG compression seems to make things a little bit I don't know not darker but just doesn't make the colors pop as much so anyway so I usually pop up the exposure a little bit and then I'll just go one more pass at the at the manual exposure uh, at the manual focus here just see if I can get it a little bit fine-tuned so I might try just dropping that a little bit to 2.4 maybe even drop it down to 2 and see if I can still get these two guys in focus yeah it's pretty good okay so there's my there's my first screenshot pretty happy with that um, even though the Binish car is not 100% in focus, it kind of gives you a sense that it's in motion. We're going to cover some of that later. But anyway, there's some of my first screenshot. So I just use my Windows key and print screen and grab it. And that's it. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to go back to the uh, far chase here. And I'm just going to use my control numpad 3. All right, well, I'm going to look for something for a little more dramatic. If I was going through a full race, I'd probably include that. So I'm just using control num 3 
just to get through the replay until I find a... A lot of these are wall hits or whatever. Uh, I guess I should probably should have found a replay with a bunch of uh, incidents, but I'm not finding that, so let's see. I'm looking for a caution now on the list of, there we go, here's a caution. So there's a caution in here somewhere. I can tell that because, because I'm just looking at the lap times, so there's obviously a caution here because there's like three laps, so I'm just going to go back a couple laps and... Let it play until I find something. There we go. So let's back that up and see if we can find something that happened. So once again, not the most exciting of accidents, but we'll have to take it for our screenshots. So this might be a good time then to, before we go and look at another accident, just to, have, to show you a more complicated setup for a screenshot. And this is something that helps um, make, make shots look really like more realistic and give a sense of speed. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna pick a car. Uh, and I know this one driver's got a nice looking car. So, so we're just gonna, what lap are we on? 83, just back it up a couple of laps. Okay. So um, I'm gonna go to this TV one. Let that play for a second. So, um, yeah, I'm going to look at this TV one for a second. What I'm looking for here is uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm looking for um, something on the walls or in the foreground that gets blurred out really obviously because um, I have the motion blur on for the broadcast cameras and the TV one is a broadcast camera. So I'm just looking for that like good opportunity like when the car is going like you don't like this too much with this stuff in the foreground where you've got fencing and junk it's not so good so i'm just gonna let it play here for a second there's a good opportunity here with a 32 maybe if i can get away from that fencing oh it already passed So I'm just going to see if I can find, uh, this is, there's a sign coming up here that might not be too bad. Okay. So there's a sign in the background. So it's get, getting all motion blurred out. So um, this might be a good opportunity for that kind of a shot. So now I want to show you something else about these broadcast um, cameras, and then we'll talk about some other cameras. If you go up here and look, you can see that the aim type for this broadcast, this TV camera is at group, which basically means that whatever driver you have selected down here, any car that's included in some proximity, I don't know what, but whatever logic they decided, that's what it's going to aim at. So it's going to try to keep in frame whatever driver you have selected plus the cars immediately surrounding it. So it's just like as it tracks the cars, it basically tracks whatever driver you're selected and then tries to keep the other ones, I think in frame. So that's the first thing I want to show here. And then zoom means that 
um, this is under this zoom here. You can have zoom or static uh, field of view. So zoom literally means that like the, as the camera's tracking, it's going to zoom in and out in order to keep things into the frame. So <clears throat> what I want to do now is I want to move the camera closer because if I take a screenshot right here, this is going to be like pretty boring, not really very dramatic. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and move in here and we'll see what happens. So I'm just moving my, see, I'm starting to get closer. Now, one of the things that starts to happen here is that the car gets out of focus and that's because you've actually moved the camera while the car is in the replay is still so it's going to start getting blurry so one of the things you can do is switch to a different camera so I'm going to switch to TV 2 and then back to TV 1 again and you can see now okay now the car's nice and and like in focus but I've lost the motion blur on the wall so what I'll do is I'll just advance it one frame and you can see there you get the blur back. Okay, so I've basically got like the car nice and clear. I've got some great blur going on with some other cars and the wall, but I still want to be much closer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the aim type from at group to static. So now basically the camera is static in this position and I'm just going to use um, my camera controls. I'm not going to move the camera, just the orientation of the camera along with my um, field of view to get in closer on that shot. So now I need to decide, okay, am I just going to have the one car in the shot? Or do I want to try to get another car into the shot? I think in this case, it'd be kind of cool to have that other car in the shot. So I'm just going to get rid of my UI with a space key. And now I'm just using my FOV and my camera view. Not changing the camera position. I'm just, just changing the view. Because if I change the position again, I'm going to go right back to the issue where everything's going to be blurry and i got to go through the whole thing, the whole rigmarole all over. So that's starting to look pretty good. I think I could probably come in a little bit tighter as I can still see that car in the background. I like that. I like that the that the red Camaro is like filling the left side of the frame. I love that you can see like the blur on the, the wall and even what's going on in behind that. So I think the only thing I might want to do is just bring the, the red Camaro into a little bit more in the center of the image. So that gives it like visually room to where it's going to go. Like you don't want to have it, you know, like that. It's not really a good balance. You really want the balance of the car to be more towards the center so that you can kind of see where the car is going to go and not just where it is. So that's a pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that right there. So I'm going to bring back my UI. And now the thing I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to adjust that exposure because you can watch and see what happens when I crank this up a little bit and see how much more like dynamic every, all the paint looks like you see how it pops and like all the dark sort of washed out look starts to really look a lot better. Like you, I could crank it all the way if I wanted to, but you really start losing a fair amount of detail. So I'm just going to bring it up quite a bit here. I think that's pretty good. And then last thing I want to do is I need to decide like <clears throat> how you know what do I want to do about my um, aperture like right now it's set to the default of eight which is fine especially since you have a lot of motion blur I don't you know you really have to play around with it that much but I'll just show you real quickly what you could do if you drop that down like if I drop that down to 1.2 bring on my manual focus and then focus this car So you can see now that I've brought that into like a very um, low f-stop number. Um, the car itself, I've got that in focus and everything else has gotten really super blurry. So it really depends on what you want to do. 
like with a motion blur i tend not to lean so heavily into the aperture when i'm taking this kind of a shot um so I, I, you know something like three or four is fine and then i'll just refocus it again making sure that i get that in focus i usually like look for something like a sticker or well, you know whatever to try to to look for when things are in focus so there's my there's my next screenshot you can, i think that's a good like makes it really look like a nice action shot okay so i'm going to go ahead and uh got that shot now the thing is that if i carry on for a while and i want to go to i don't know another lap or whatever let me just go to a different lap it doesn't matter and i'm going to choose a different driver well the problem is that i have completely messed up this camera because of all my all the things that i just been doing like i changed it from at car or at group to static i changed you know the focus i changed the expo i changed everything about this so the thing to do is if you if you're messing and this this doesn't matter when you do this like if you're messing around with a camera and you screw it up all you have to do is just like pick a different camera it doesn't matter which one i'll just pick gyro and then go to your load track and reload the default again and now it's back so there's my tv1 camera that was just all messed up and now it's back because so you just you can just go down here and say load that load track anytime you want and uh it'll just reset it to whatever it was when you first loaded up the game so um <clears throat> i think that's like we're getting to the to the end of things that are going to be helpful to people but um I think that you can play around a lot with these broadcast cameras and um, sometimes if you do one of these um, like a rear chase look on a car one of the cool things is that you can use that to your benefit because it could be like a starting point for a shot so like like here's a good shot of a bunch of cars let's go back a little bit further like yeah looking for a nice stack up car here yeah so this isn't too bad so like if you want to try to show that these guys are in a battle you can start with this view right here um, which is the rear chase on on sarge's car and i can just like move that camera around however i need to now the thing is you have some constraints when it's attached to a car but again you can play around with this keep moving it around uh, i can probably you're looking for an, oh this is a, this is a good opportunity to show you guys something here so let's say let, let's just say that like i want this shot here i want to see a shot of um the white car chasing down the blue car well <clears throat> if i if i zoom out here and i look at this from the side or i can look at it from a different angle let's just look at it from i want to show you guys something here let's look at the chopper so you can see what I'm trying to do is show a battle between the 28 and the white car, the 83 car. Is it 83? Yeah. So, um, so what I, I want to actually show that, well, the way to, sh to show that is by using um, a low FOV and you can sort of force perspective your way into having a shot that makes it look like the 28 and the 33 are really battling. So let me go back and load my default again, and then I'm going to go to rear chase. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to position the camera in such a way, along with my FOV, to force a perspective here where I can see that the looks like that car. Now, the problem I've got here is that the car in front of sergeant's car is like filling up the frame which sucks so one of the things you can play around with is this near place near plane bias slider and basically what it is it's like it's almost like a draw distance thing let me just show you real quick here what happens when you when you move that around so you can see it's it's based on the position of the camera how much does it draw how far away does it does it draw so you can see here, here as, as I'm increasing the near plane bias, 
it's actually getting rid of the car that's in front of me or that the camera's inside of so i can just keep moving that slider until boom boom there's gary's car so i'm just gonna back off the fov a little bit and you can see i can still see a little bit of the car you see that so i can just I just keep playing with that and this this comes in really handy when you're trying to set up a shot sometimes like against walls and stuff where you want to show you want to show a shot of a car like making contact with like a pit pit road wall or something um or you want a really tight shot of a car but there's another car like right next to it and you can't get at it so um so this is this near plane bias because I basically just erased the car that was in front of Gary, where, which is based on where the camera is. So I now it looks because I'm using a, a high FOV, it looks way more like the white car of Harrison is like tracking down the the 28 car. So you can kind of trick things up a little bit with the FOV to make things look different than they actually are. So we go through the same stuff we always go through. Um, in this case, I'm going to probably use, I'm going to start somewhere around, I don't know, 2.4. And I'm going to go ahead and get Sergeant's car in focus. So now we'll just take a look and see. So you can still see that white car and it's like almost, like because it's, it's white and it's a little out of focus, it looks a little bit ominous, but I think it's too blurry. So I'm just going to crank it up a little bit higher, go to 3.3. See how that looks. There's, that's probably. So yeah, so like that, I like that because it's 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 got the sergeant in really nice sharp focus, and then you can kind of see the white car in the background. Um, might have it a little bit out of focus on Gary's car. There's that Ford symbol. Okay. So then we do our regular stuff. We go in and do our exposure, crank that up a little bit. Don't want to get too much nuclear uh, radioactive glow going on here, but that's a little bit better. Okay, we'll take a look. And I like that shot. That's good. You, you notice that like the crowd is all blurred out because of the, the focal um, length I'm using and the speedway sign on the wall, like a painted on the wall with a little out of focus. So it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a screenshot of that. Now, one of the things you can do is you go ahead and advance a frame. And what you'll see is some nice blur effect happening on the ground. So when I, when I first went to this camera angle, if you look at the asphalt, like look over here in the bottom left, you can see just like how crisp and clean that is. But because motion blur is turned on for cameras um, in, in cars and broadcast, if I just advance that a frame, I still get the same shot I want. But now look at how the all of the asphalt um, is like blurred out. So it looks like there's way more speed going on. So... Yep, so that's that. So there's another screenshot. So um, that's the kind of stuff that I do. And um, I, I hope that I didn't blow through all of these settings but I, uh, too fast. But I think the main thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, use, use your best judgment when trying to figure out what a good screenshot is going to look like because um, focus on trying to capture um, the, the moment or something that's memorable about a specific part of a race or a specific, um, even, even if it's just your car that you want to fo focus on for like a, you know, just like a beauty shot, you, you know, you have to really think about what angles look good, what, you know, don't just drop it in the middle of a giant speedway and you've got this little blob of pixels on a big giant, um, track and 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 if you, and if your car is involved in a in a wreck and you're trying to get a screenshot like don't worry that you can't get all seven cars that were involved in the wreck like in the shot 
um, you can just just focus on something that makes the shot more memorable for whoever looks at it, and then you could you know you can take two or three if you if you want of, of the different parts of the wreck or different parts of a pass or whatever it happens to be because um, you know th this kind of shot here is not going to do anything for anybody like oh boy the 28 car is tracking down the 42 but it's like it looks just there's just nothing there to to get excited about um, whereas if I you know wanted to go and pick up uh, like a uh, rear chase from Benson's car move that around I can I can set up some pretty interesting shots to show that um, that Gary is about to pass Benson so that's my advice to you guys is just to don't be afraid to be close up and play around with uh, the exposure um, don't forget about you know if you want to make something look like it's moving then you know use the that motion blur setup like I showed you in the replay options and don't forget to advance a frame once you have your shot set up so you can you can get those nice blurs going on and when you're using uh, TV cameras remember that um, let me load up a remember that you know you basically want to frame your shot and then don't move the camera or else you're gonna have all kinds of issues with um, things blurring out on you All right, well, I think that's going to be it. So I hope this was helpful and hope you guys have fun making screenshots and um, we'll catch you down the road.